I'm going to get stuff off my chest here in the form of a list. My first <laughs> list of 2023. Hey. Season's over, folks, for all of these teams. As we all know, 32 minus 14 equals what, 18, right? Correct. 18. There are 18 teams. I've got five that made the most disappointing teams list of the 2022 NFL season. Hit it, Mike Del Tufo. Not all these teams are ones that had high expectations coming into the season. There's one on this list that had zero expectations coming into the season, but the middle of the season showed that there was reason for expectations to be placed upon this team. Number five on this list of the most disappointing teams of 2020, 2022 is the New York Jets. You just made the list. Number five. I mean, this team in the middle of the season had a championship defense. All they had to do was just have an offense to match. Now, unfortunately for them, Brees Hall, who had an offensive rookie of the year campaign all lined up, blows out his knee. Elijah Vera Tucker, their best offensive lineman, goes out, and the offensive line falls apart. Nobody can run the football. I have no idea what happened when they acquired James Robinson from the Jaguars. I thought, there you go, plug him in. He hardly played. I have no idea what the hell was happening on the offensive side of the football. Mike White had a flash of a moment. They start Joe Flacco to start the season and finish the season. They finish the season with zero touchdowns in the final three games. Zero touchdowns in the final three games. Talk about a disappointment. They had an opportunity. The Dolphins get in. The Dolphins get in because Mm. the Jets couldn't score a freaking touchdown against a team that was begging to be bounced at home. Talk about disappointing. I'm disappointed. Let's see what they do moving on. And, of course, I didn't even mention what the hell happened with Zach Wilson. Number four on this list is a team that fired their head coach just today. The Arizona Cardinals had some high hopes. They made the playoffs last year. They had an 11-win season. Yes, they got one and done, but even with DeAndre Hopkins missing the first six games, we were supposed to see the freshly re-signed to a monster contract, Kyler Murray, come out and do what he did last year, and it wasn't even remotely close. They blew J.J. Watt's final season. I mean, he, he looked terrific yesterday. Talk about a disappointment. My goodness gracious. They're now without a head coach. The general manager, Steve Kimes, steps away in the middle of the season. He's now out as well. They need a new coach. They need a new GM. But they've re-signed Kyler Murray, who apparently the locker room uh, needs to have a refresh button hit on their relationship with him, according to Patrick Peterson. And by the way, everyone else who covers the league will tell you this. Number three on this list is a coach, is a team that had an ability to win their division. They had a kid who could be an MVP coming into the season. He was definitely number one in your fantasy league draft. And the Indianapolis Colts just fell flat. And they had Matt Ryan as well. This was supposed to be the better match than Carson Wentz. Hey, Carson Wentz, say what you will about how bad he was in Indianapolis. He had a chance for this team to make the playoffs in the final week of the season, and they blew it. So they changed everything around, and then they fire Frank Reich, who, you know, switched to Sam Ellinger for some reason instead of Nick Foles, and they bench Ryan. They put the kid in there. He falls flat. They hire Jeff Saturday from high school in ESPN. The only uh, – unbelievable. And just a disaster of a season. I mean, it got so bad with Saturday at one point, Steve Smith said that Saturday should be the first interim coach ever fired. <laughs> Number two on this list, though, is the team, the only, the, the only team that lost to the Jeff Saturday coached Indianapolis Colts, and it's the team that I had winning the division. Number two. Number two, the Vegas Raiders. They had it all working, man. Yeah. And now Derek Carr gets sent home. He gets Keyshawned because they don't want him to get hurt. He's gone. I mean, he's as good as gone. They needed to see what they had in Jared Stidham as if he just got, he just met Josh McDaniels. He he wasn't in the quarterback room for Josh McDaniels. Like everybody keeps saying, we're going to see what they have in uh, in, in Jared Stidham. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Like you didn't know him. I mean, then it all lined up and how much egg is on my face has nothing to do with it. Because when it's all said and done, when they lost to the Chiefs, the Raiders finished, wait for it, 
eight games behind the Chiefs. Eight. Whew. Talk about a disappointment. But number one is a, a team that had the coach and the quarterback, and they fired a coach in the middle of the season, and he was clearly not ready for the moment. And we have no idea how Russell Wilson is going to look moving on. I mean, they finished up strong. Very nice. But everybody thought, just add Russ. And forget about not cooking. The kitchen went poof. The Denver Broncos are the most disappointing team in the NFL of 2022. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free. 